Okay. Evaporating cloud. Okay. So, Bill, now we've seen uh, at the end of the current reality tree that we found a critical root cause, or a few of them. Mm -hmm. Now, from there on, what, what is the next step? Okay, the, when you've identified the critical root causes, uh, the obvious next step is to take some action to uh, eliminate them. And eliminating them, because they are part of the cause and effect chain, is going to require changing to something else that does not produce the undesirable effects that the critical root causes did. Uh, in most critical root causes, there is probably not likely to be too much disagreement on the need to change. However, there are a few, every so often, that uh, the changing of that critical root cause, while it cures one problem, creates difficulties for other people in the organization. And these can be various different kinds of difficulties, but basically, it prompts those people to protest about the change. They want to leave things as they are because they are very much doing very well under the existing order of things. So now this presents a, a conflict situation. On the one hand, change. On the other hand, don't change. You know that in order to change, if you change, you're going to cure the problem that you're doing your analysis on. If you don't change, uh, you won't cure that problem, but you may prevent the generation of a new problem that did not exist before. Mm -hmm. So that poses a, a real dichotomy. The evaporating cloud allows uh, the, the, the problem solver to operate on the principle that if you are within the same system, both sides are likely to be working toward a common objective. And uh, the two requirements for that objective uh, are likely to be uh, critical success factors. So, as, and, the, and the common objective is very likely to be the goal. So it becomes a little easier to structure the conflict in a way that facilitates easier resolution if you can determine uh, which critical success factor a particular uh, side of the conflict is trying to achieve. Uh, once you've done that, then the process allows you to generate some sort of an idea for a solution that can be proven later on in the process that will not only deliver both of the requirements uh, of each, uh, the requirements of each side but it will also uh, not create the undesirable effect uh, that the, uh, the one side was protesting. And uh, so what we, we refer to that as an injection. It's an idea for a new breakthrough approach that uh, didn't exist before. And it's called an injection because you have to introduce it into the situation. And then uh, once that's done, you resolve the conflict. You have a, a plan to uh, eliminate the other critical root causes that don't have a conflict associated with them. Okay. 